Welcome into DMVR Buffs Prime Time. We are presented by Illegal Pete's. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour, 3 to 6 p.m. every single day. Jake Schwanitz joined today by Nikki Edwards of CU Sports Report. Welcome back, Nikki. Thank you for having me back. The people have been asking for you. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah. I'm glad you missed me. I like riding passenger seat. I like being in the booth, chopping it up with my good friend, good old pal Jake. Yeah, let's talk some buffs. Yeah, I might not be Ryan, but I, I am a close second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, to have sat in that chair, of course. <laughs> um, got a lot to get to today, guys. We talked to Coach Sal Sinceri, Um, Then we got to, t- to talk to Cordell Stewart. That was such a cool surprise. Yeah. I've personally never talked to him before, but I think just the historic perspective and background that he provided um, just today's press conference. I mean, we talked for 23 minutes and he was so extensive and he really elaborated. And I think he was provided like the first perspective of like the impact and influence that Coach Prime has actually brought to campus. Like, yes, we have the numbers, but looking at it from a national championship perspective and the history, of course, he has like yep. very, very good interview. Very good interview. We're going to catch you all up with everything that's going on in the portal. Who's been offered? Uh, one player earned their number today. Uh, I published over at thedmvr.com a list of players or recruits who will be visiting for the spring game. We'll talk to that. But first, we have some uh, some details on what we're doing for this spring game weekend in terms of tailgates and stuff. We'll have more details for you guys tomorrow. Um, but... We are going to set something up for Saturday morning that will be available to everyone. Um, even if you don't have a ticket to the game, you can come hang out. If you're coming in that morning of, the day before, or whenever, you can still come through. Um, so just one more day, guys, please. One more day. And I promise we can tell you about everything we have planned for this spring game. But just know that there's some exciting stuff on the horizon. All right, Nikki, let's start. Talking about Coach Sal Sinceri. Let's do a no hat, Jake. Yeah, no hat, Jake. Did you get a haircut? Here. I did get a haircut. It looks good. Thank you. Good appreciate fade. It. Do the one, yep. two on top. Well, just one with the high fade. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I tell them. I usually tell them that. They too. told me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You look like you get those high fades yep. all the time. I had four inches of hair on my head. They told me. I Is know. that like a PR? No, not a PR. <laughs> but I was surprised at how long it got. Uh, anyways, we spoke to co- Coach Sal Sinceri today. Um, you asked him why he came to Colorado, mentioned a lot about Charles Kelly, um, and just talked about the time they spent together at Florida State and at Alabama. Yeah, they have a long history together. You know, he mentioned that they won a national championship together. They definitely have that old school approach. Mm-hmm. I think if anyone, I mean, we've uh, we've said that Coach Prime, like, Coach is old school, but, like, Sal Sinceri is old school. You can tell, like, you know, he's – speaks very clearly and just, you know, cuts all the BS out, really. So, um, <laughs> I know it's crazy right now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, you know, it was a good, I think a good hire for him to come to from Alabama. I think him and uh, Charles Kelly are going to be a really good recruiting pairing. Like they were really productive at Alabama and of course at the other colleges that they yep. worked with prior. So yeah, for that sure. was a big reason why he came to Boulder. He was very interesting. Um, We'll play a clip uh, because a lot of these transfers out have been on the defensive line. Um, And so he was asked today about those transfers outs and what he's expecting out of players he's looking for in the portal. Them leaving has an effect to solve. If four guys stepped up and did a heck of a job, you know, Shane Coates, Payne, Sammy, Mason Maddox, they went in there and they took the reps and they got better reps and they, they did quality reps and they, they got better. The bottom line is, is that we're going to work with the guys that are here. The guys that don't want to be here, we'll see you later, and uh, we're going to get better. So you're not worried at all about Saturday's depth? No. Okay. Coach, no, to, I, don't, I, I, I don't worry about anything. You to know, go off those that. Those guys will be ready to play. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I'm ready. To go off that, what are you looking for when you're looking at guys in the portal under your position group? Well, the bottom line is that, you know, when you're looking at it, you're looking at guys that can make plays, guys that have quickness, guys that have speed, guys that have length. And then you go and you watch the tape on them and you see if they can upgrade you from where you uh, were with the guys that left. And right now we got visions on people and, you know, hopefully we can get them here and 
next thing you know, we're going to be playing with a defensive line that's going to come off the ball, it's going to strike, it's going to dominate, and go get sacks. Because the most important thing is to stop the run and affect the quarterback. There it is. That's what he's looking for. He's a pretty intense guy. <laughs> he's not say? worried about anything. No. I think that was definitely a big storyline talking to him, just the amount of turnover the defensive line has had just this past week. Um, you know, there's only you – know, you got Sami, you got Taj Austin. He can't play. I think it's five scholarship defensive linemen. Yeah, and Coke. So, you know, it's going to be pretty limited in terms of depth, and you're just there's guys just going to be repping and repping and repping on, uh, on Saturday. But – as we've seen too, they're really pinpointing and targeting um, defensive line guys in the portal. Yeah, it's um, probably been the room that's received the most attrition in terms of transfers out. Uh, Naeem Rodman just entered the portal. Alan Ball entered the portal. Also, um, two other guys into the portal. We'll get to those. Coach was also asked about the standard that Coach Prime expects out of his players um, and why. There have been so many, uh, I guess, transactions in this defensive line room. Coach Prime expects you to go out there every single day, get go to get better. Don't go out there to just go through the motions and get through the day. You're going out there to get better. You're going to specifically work on a technique that you want to improve on. And then once you get that technique, move on to the next technique and let's get better. Don't come out there and be satisfied. Because you can't be, because there's somebody else out there in this country that's out working here. So there you go. There's the standard. Um, it's just kind of next man up. Yeah, and I think you've seen it too <laughs> with uh, just only Shane Cokes earning his number. Like, yes, there's a lot of guys that left, but like they, he also still holds a really high expectation for his guys. Like, unlike Coach Hart said, I don't even know when we talked to him, he's like, oh, us, us defensive coaches, we're just lazy. We're just yeah. giving them out. <laughs> I thought that was like really contradictory to what they were working towards, but as we've just seen this progress so far, no one has really been earning their numbers. It's just been like, well, people have, but it's been really like incremental, like a really mm -hmm. slower rate. And in terms of that D line room, like Salas and Siri has really high expectations for these guys, and to be able to like be versatile, like you know, on and off the ball, vice versa. Like he's just looking for a lot of them. For sure. Um, all right, the people are asking, Nikki, let them know your publication and what CU Sports Report is real quick. I work for Rivals.com. CU Sports Report is the uh, section under Rivals. So CUSportsReport.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Nikki Edwards, and I KKI with three S's. All of my work is on there. And you can also follow me on Instagram. It's Nikki Edwards with three S's as well. There you go. Um, final thing from Coach Sanceri. He was asked about the guys from last year who are still on the team. I mean, is this just Jalen Sami now, yeah, I it's guess? Yeah, just Jalen Sami. Um, but he kind of uh, elaborated on what those guys have done to stand out, Jalen Sami in particular. I've been in installs at the University of Alabama for the last four years, and you know we were able to install stuff and get new guys up to speed. I took Will Anderson coming in as a freshman and uh, met with him every single day. He started for every game since he's been at Alabama. So the whole thing is, is that you have an install uh, that you're going to install, and you got to take the kids through it, and then they'll learn. And then the kids that are here are going to help them. They will sit with them. This is what we're doing on this call. So it is, a, it is a group effort having everybody on the same page. Well, that's what he, I guess, is kind of looking for in terms of when guys come in and want to install. But he did talk about Jalen Sami. Said that he's had a nice last two days of practice. Um, feels like he's coming along well. Talked about slimming him down, too. As we know, he's a pretty big guy. Mm -hmm. um, but he wants to kind of trim some of that off of him, get him more in shape, it looks yeah. like. Build more muscle on him, build more strength. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, Bill of Oil was working on that, the offensive line. Completely different. But, you know, when you're having, like, those really, like, guys in the trenches that can utilize their strengths in an accurate and effective way, it's going to be really productive. For sure. Uh, let's get to the Cordell stuff. I mean, he was fantastic, and uh, I wish we could share the whole thing um, because he just kind of went off and just like <laughs> yeah, it felt very intimate. Like yeah. it wasn't just like a you know regular like usual presser like scrum that we have. Like he was really intentional, and you can tell the passion he has for the program. And just like I said earlier, it's 
Well, I think it's also rare just for us to have a perspective like that. Like we're not around these guys all the time and to see him be so involved with the program firsthand, like he's here this week working with coach prime, like, of course they have a good relationship, but like hearing kind of that tangible evidence even further of what coach prime has done within this program, just with the history Cordell has had. And it's, it's great that he sees what he experienced in the mm -hmm. 1990s with this program today. Yeah, a really uh, interesting perspective, not only just as an all-time great and someone who's been around the program for a while, um, but of course as a player too. He talked about Shador. Uh, he talked about a lot. Go ahead and play that video. So this is the first, or I guess his opening statement from his media availability. Whenever you're ready. Oh, first, uh, it's great to be back, of course. Um, Coach Prime's effect is, is beyond words when it comes to this institution where I've had so much success with my teammates. With some of you that may have been here and saw it at one time, um, he's really come in and, and kind of re-energized, I think, how we think about football here, here at CU. It's like there was a plug that was sitting on the floor next to the socket. And someone had to be brave enough to put it in the ball to get this thing lit up again. And while I know some are waiting to say, see, I told you so, or for there to be a mistake, that's a part of the game. I'm not concerned about that. The part I love is, is this community is in the mix with loving the buffs again. When you sell out a spring game, literally sell out a spring game. I got friends that went to school down in Atlanta where I live asking me, can they get a ticket to come to the game? And they ain't never come nowhere past the Mississippi, bro. okay? Uh, and to have that energy, because we all know, over the years, what was the most significant play we've seen in the month of September and the very beginning of the season is the Hail Mary Pass, man. Uh, we have some conversations about the players prior to that, like the national championship team, but that was one play in particular that we can honestly say that we remember the most which we had a national championship team that went to national championship two years in a row. Uh, and they need to be acknowledged too. Uh, I think what Coach Prime is doing, Prime is doing with all the players coming back. It's well overdue, well overdue. And to now know that guys want to come back. They're asked to come back. They're needed to come back. Because if you think about that, 87 year and 88 year went to the Liberty Bowl and then we go to two national championship games and then it kind of makes a run to like 2000 or so as far as winning on a consistent basis. That's the enemy we're fighting for right now. And uh, I think Coach Prime has done a magnificent job of helping us in this community and people around the country understand that, as I was saying a second ago before I came on, it's like a big amp pound that's been mounting and mounting and mounting. And he came in and took his foot and stead it right in the middle of that thing. And we know what happens with Amazon, right? Stuff just goes crazy. Ants are going all over the place. You look at what we're doing with our paraphernalia, we're second in the country. Haven't taken a snap yet when it comes to our paraphernalia in this country. When it comes down to the transfer portal, we're number one. When it comes down to the 23 class that's coming in, we're in the top 25. When it comes down to ticket, when it comes down to ticket sales, we sold out. We said that already. Hotel is up 50% rate. Why? We won 11 last year. So if anyone's asking, we need to see. If you're not watching the process and you're not paying attention, you're not here for the right reasons. You're here to see failure, which is based on our expectations have been taking place for a long time. So while guys have been working their butts off and trying to do the best they can, it still wasn't good enough. Not on this level and standard, in which I am so familiar with, based on what Coach Matt gave us when I came in. So this is where we are. This is the time where you guys have a lot to write about. Take out your communication skills when it comes to how people are doing to your right. When it comes to tagging what this is all about, the narratives that you create. I'm watching, I'm reading. But it's good times though. Right? It makes your story writing in the newspapers, articles, things of that nature. Exciting. Because we're trying to figure out what's the problem. We haven't found one yet. That's why we just keep on going. That's what the process is.
And there's the man. See you, legend Cordell Stewart. I mean, that's how he walked in. Just yeah. ripping, <laughs> ripping off all of that. Transfer portal, history, Coach Prime, everything just right off the bat for him. I know, and I, I asked him. I, I didn't know he was just so passionate about it, and it was like I think like a three minute, four minute thing. And I asked the first question, and I asked him before he was done. I was like, "Are you finished?" I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that he was finished. And I asked him what his relationship like was, Coach Prime. And I guess they go back like quite a while, and they've just maintained a close relationship as they've um, gone throughout their careers in Jackson State. And I remember Cordell talking like when Deion Sanders got this job, he's like he's coming to Boulder. Mm -hmm. Like he had the same reaction that we all did um, to Coach Prime coming to Boulder. And yeah, just like I said, like just to like see Cordell's reaction and see what he saw within the 90s program in today's program, like that is just so meaningful. I mean, the numbers that Deion Sanders has done so far have been a testament to that, but like I feel like this was really solidifying and everything that we've been reporting about, everything that we've been seeing, like going like back in time and like bringing that perspective like forward to this day, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, I encourage you all to watch the full interview. We've got it uploaded on the DMV or Sports YouTube channel all 23 minutes. Um, I mean, he was fantastic. It's really a must listen to, must watch. But he's been there all week. Um, as you talked about, kind of detailed how long he knew Coach Prime, going back to Super Bowl 30, Steelers versus Cowboys. <laughs> uh, before my time, yeah. way before your time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they played together in Baltimore for a bit when mm -hmm. both Ravens. were at the tail end of their career. Mm -hmm. um, so the connection goes quite far back. He also talked about Shador um, and just... I don't know how well he knew him. I don't think he talked about how yeah. well he knew him back he then. He said he but. was nice. Cordell said... He was Shador nice, was nice. Like 10 times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was like his beginning statement. But he, he said that, you know, he throws the ball well, his mm -hmm. placement, his timing, like it's all it's all on par. And he also, you know, made reference to the Pac-12 quarterbacks and saying, you know, that kind of going on that narrative of like, is Shador ready for this Pac-12 opportunity? And he just said, like, you know, look at the way he plays, like and look at what the Pac-12 quarterback room is offering. Shador is not going to be – at the bottom of that mm -hmm. barrel. Yeah. Well, specifically, you said the bottom of the barrel. We all kind of know what it is. And, well, we kind of saw the bottom of the barrel <laughs> last year. And he's uh, much better than that. Yeah. That's so the buffs are in better hands. By quite a quite a margin, I would say. That's why I'm, so, I'm just so excited for the spring game and just seeing that atmosphere and actually seeing them kind of run some scrimmage reps and just some, yeah, just like play the game yep. in front of our eyes. Nothing better. Nothing's better than football. Can't wait. Well, <laughs> and then we have a three months of off season to go through. But yeah, we'll survive. Um, Cordell said he's been there on campus all week. He's going to be there through Saturday for the spring game. So he's actually holding a massive opportunity for fans to get autographs from Cordell and, I mean, name them. All these buff legends are going to be in town. LaVisca, Chanel. LaVisca's there. Be. Alfred Williams, Michael Res Westbrook, uh, Daniel Graham, Darian Hagan, Mike Pritchard, Nate Solder, David Bakhtiari, Mason Crosby, uh, recent buffs like Nate Landman, Isaiah Oliver, you said LaVisca, Jawan Winfrey, Akella Witherspoon, uh, and more and more and more. Yeah. That's, that's something that Cordell said too. It's just, I think the community impact that mm -hmm. Prime has had, like even... Just looking, I have a video of last year's spring game, and it's just like a few fans like scattered about Folsom, but this is going to be packed. Like so many people are wanting to come to Folsom and watch this game. Like you said, like his friends back in Mississippi, like they've never traveled past beyond the Mississippi River out west, but they want tickets to the game, and you see it on Twitter. And like I see people coming out of my high school woodwork, like they're like, oh, like how can I get a ticket to the spring game? And you know, it is it is sold out, but the community aspect of this spring game is really, really also important just just to see where we were a year ago and where right. we are now. It's pretty crazy. Um, this weekend is just going to be insane. Can't wait. Uh, Nicholas says, Geronte Davis news coming soon. We'll see. All right, before we move on, guys, a quick shout out to our friends at Pins and Aces, I think. Uh, Pins and Aces, the official golf apparel partner of All City and DMVR. 
Uh, we love our pins and aces gear and get tons of compliments on and off the course. Uh, I don't know if you saw. I wore that like green hoodie shirt thing last week from pins and aces. Part it looked of, really good. <laughs> yeah. Part of their super fresh collections they have there. Uh, they're family owned um, and they're based right here in Colorado. Um, golf polos, hats, golf bags, even our favorite beer sleeves. Uh, you can get it from Pins and Aces. Go to pinsandaces.com and use code DMVR to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. Again, that's pinsandaces.com. And then shout out to our, uh, Nikki, if you want to be uh, the model today. This is Shador's number two barbecue sauce. Hell yeah. Shador Sanders' number two barbecue is a tomato-based, rich, thick, sweet molasses-style barbecue sauce with tangy vinegar and fiery heat that finishes with a subtle smoky note. This barbecue sauce was created in partnership between Shador Sanders and PLB Sports and Entertainment. This unique barbecue sauce is available on plbse.com for a limited time. Use code ALLCITY at checkout for 10% off your order of number two barbecue. Again, plbse.com. Go load up on Shador's number two barbecue. <laughs> Says it's great on the grill. It is great on the grill. You know, I also, I have to look up uh, pins and aces now because I am a big, avid golfer myself. That's how I got these scars in my hands recently. Yeah? Yeah, I went golfing with my dad. He was, like, coaching it's me It's that up. time of year. Yeah, I know. load up on pins and aces. If you guys ever have a DMVR Invitational? Um, we'll have some stuff coming up. I'll let you know. Yeah. I know we're about to get into it, but um, Gage, Ginther, Gage Ginther tweeted, to clarify, I will not be at CU on Saturday. Oh, go Vols. Oh, interesting. Wow. Hashtag go Vols. Wow. So he just committed to, was it last week or the week before he committed to Tennessee? Recently. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, the time, time it, it is blends a, together, such yeah. a silly construct these days. <laughs> That's true. All right. Um, guys that are out. We already talked about Naeem Rodman, Alan Baugh, but Simeon Harris and Zach Courtney have also entered the transfer portal. That brings us to 12, I believe, guys, since this portal period is open. Mm -hmm. 20 in total, going back to when Coach Prime was hired. Uh, Simeon Harris had a decent year last year, played, uh, I believe, nickel and corner and safety, um, and... That was a position group that was really beat up at times last year for CU, so he stepped up. But he's out. Zach Courtney did not see the field as a true freshman tight end. He is out. Um, I was told uh, expect maybe up to 10 guys after this spring game to enter the portal. So we're not done yet. <laughs> no. I mean, they still... Just like, you know, it's like some someone's got to give, you know. Like if, if they're at 86 scholarships right now and they got to get, you know, they got to have at least 85, there has to be some turnover. And the way that Coach Prime is talking about, like, bringing guys in, and he's like, the team that we're playing with this spring is not going to be the team that we have in September. Like, you know, the the turnover is just going to be kind of continual with this team. And, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like, you know, there's a variety of guys that seem to be locked in, but they seem so, like, passionate about going and getting guys in the portal, which is good, but, you know, they have to still meet this scholarship maximum right which they it's like it's always fluctuating every day so yeah. i mean shiloh some, hasn't even transferred in yet yeah so, yeah it, so many like yeah there's just so many position groups that are already like pretty filled i mean yes like you guys you guys went over like which uh which position groups like need to be kind of a little bit a little a little bit helped by the portal the d line is definitely one i yeah. mean i think they could use another inside linebacker For i think sure. having demoy kennedy in there will be productive for them but yeah it's just like you know when when is it things going to even out probably just literally by fall we're going to see like probably that literally roster. yeah the day before <laughs> the TCU game um i mean we can talk about the scholarship numbers and all that stuff but right now it's just so hard to gauge because we had two or three other players commit to the program mm -hmm. um the first one being Tristan Maroy that came out today. Um, it was just a Twitter post, but he said that he's honored to have the opportunity to join the ranks at University of Colorado Boulder. Nikki, what does join the ranks mean? <laughs> Do you know? Um, so I joined the ranks when I started this job, <laughs> yes. and I think I just kind of walked into it. So it kind of, it just, 
joining it's like it's kind of i don't think it's very like clear 100 percent, but no you know as i said i feel like their their door is pretty open at the moment and if you're looking to walk on and like work your ass off go for it right that's what i'm kind of thinking personally it sounds like a preferred walk-on type of issue or circumstance i guess mm -hmm. he is a six foot six 210 pound defensive end I saw four um, nine four nine forty on his NTA profile. For six six, it's not bad. <laughs> Need to add some to that frame. But um Robert Morris is where he's listed on the roster. It says he's from Quebec too. So um that's where he's from. He says he's joining the program. We'll see in what capacity. He's listed as Robert Morris? Uh the school he went to, yes. Oh the school oh, he came oh. from. Oh, okay. Yeah. And say um say do you follows him yep. on Twitter. So he does. There's some there's some like some social media connections with him. But yeah, that's all we know. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a defensive end and then I also on yep. his NCA profile, I don't know, it was like this like weird link, but it said his secondary position was tight end. Oh, interesting. Wow. So maybe we can That's a great piece of info. I like <laughs> that. Um next guy, Gabe Landers commits to CU. He is a long snapper. And he transfers in from Miami, the Hurricanes. Long snappers don't get enough credit. Shout out to the long snappers <laughs> out there. Well, it, CU's got a bunch of them. It's hard to do that. <laughs> CU's got a bunch of them now. <laughs> what are we doing? As long as we don't have a Washington game where it's snapped over the punter's head, we'll yeah. be. I think we'll be okay. We just gotta, you know, you gotta nail it down. Just, you know, just spin the ball. Just spin the ball right. Just have a good handoff. You're good. Hopefully, uh, Gabe can do that for Maybe us. Maybe I should hit up Trevor Riley to join the special teams union coaching there staff. There you go. <laughs> I'll be a good like character coach. I'll help like build yes. morale. You could definitely do it. I think I think I could. You bring too. that same fire that Salson's Harry brings. Yeah, the the third phase <laughs> needs just like a confidence boost. You know, I'm like you got it, guys. <laughs> this is um, important. <laughs> yes, they need to realize the importance of their job and uh, perform better. We'll see. I mean, you brought in. I think Jacob Polite was also the long snapper from Jackson mm -hmm. State. Um, he had all the guys from last year. So there's going to be some attrition there. And then the big one, I already saw a lot of people talking about it in the chat. Willie Gaines commits to Colorado, transfers in from Jackson State. Last year, he had 27 receptions for 446 yards and five touchdowns. Um, and I was also letting know on Twitter that he, was, he had four touchdowns called back last year, too. Uh, and this is another guy who, 5'10", 165, not very big, but uh, he's got speed, speed for days. So we're getting even faster out on the perimeter. Mm. Yep. Four touchdowns called back. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, he had a super long one from Shador. Um, that's the highlight that I think a lot of people have seen. It was like 80-plus. Willie Gaines, I think, yeah. originally committed to Toledo. Um, and then... Entered the portal uh, to join, well, this is Georgia State. It has to be Jackson State, though, right? Unless he played at Georgia State, too, but obviously from Jackson State last year. Will H says, let's go, Willie Gaines, the best name for real. Uh, Ron says, the rest of the Louis luggage coming in. Yeah, familiarity is always good. Not the Jackson State receiver we thought was coming in, though. No. No, it's still... What do we think is going on with our friend Shane Hooks? I think he's assessing his options. Still, we were talking about it like the old, um, yeah, old Miss uh, Lane Kiffin. Yep. Tweeted he like subtweeted like yeah. CU's yoga day. I that I had that has no connection to Shane Hooks, but in terms of old Miss and his options that he's looking at, I mean, we he had that Instagram post where he. We did his like, top five, and Deion Sanders Jr. song was it, and it just seemed very CU leaning. Right. Um, you know, that was somewhat of an indicator. And I just think, you know, if since, you know, all of them are coming from Jackson State, if they wanted a Jackson State guy on the roster, I feel like they could, they have like authority and like jurisdiction to take that guy like mm -hmm. over the other schools. I mean, ultimately it is up to them at the end of the day, but, you know, you would think just with, um, you know, Sanders' resume and his like his relationships with all the kids you as a player would want to go play for especially Deion Sanders like right. go go and go back to your program and play with your old quarterback yada 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 
that's just, you know, that's a, I think it's just a developing situation. I think it'd be just great if he, if they had um, a receiver such as Shane Coke. Like, he does some crazy stuff. And he's big, and they need a big receiver. Mm -hmm. They're not very big in that room. No. But, yeah, kind of what you said. I feel like um, if Shane Hooks was going to come to Colorado, he would have committed by now almost. Yeah. Um, especially the fact that Willie Gaines has already committed and obviously from Jackson State as well. Um, one's come in through Jackson State. We'll see if it's another one, I guess. Yeah, anytime there's a Jackson State portal entry, like my immediate thought is like, are they coming to see you? Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's like just safe to make that assumption. Right. Most of the time. Yep. But I'm, ex I'm interested to see what this J.D. Davis is news is all about yeah we need to figure out what's going on with Geronte davis he said he's gonna they say he was announcing something today yeah, what was it big news on the way six hours ago we'll find out then we're still waiting nothing else since yeah and he subtweeted willie's tweet last night but of course they were teammates right yeah, yeah. we love reading into things yeah. don't we <laughs> <laughs> we do all right uh let's catch up on some offers from the portal Former Florida State safety Brendan Gant receives an offer from CU. He was a former 2019 four-star recruit, was 117th overall recruit, 11th overall safety, according to 247. Sorry. Uh. Uh, <laughs> FSU listed him at linebacker. He had 33 total tackles, one sack, one pass defense, and one fumble recovery last year. And he is from Lakeland, Florida. I, I love this for the buffs. And on the topic of reading into things, there's so many connections there with like Tim Brewster, FSU, yep. Sinceri, yep. Kelly. Like the FSU ties go really deep mm -hmm. with this. And it was, and they're also, you know, they're also looking for a linebacker in that room. I think this would be such a great get for the depth um, within that room. And Lakeland. Exactly. Romani, I mean, yep. it, like, I don't know they have pretty, pretty deep ties within Florida and like those areas in the South. So it's, it's the Lakeland for me and it's also the FSU yep. for me. Yep. Lots of connections there. Um, it was interesting. He was listed at linebacker two, four, seven. Um, and I believe he entered the portal as a safety. Yeah. He was rivals has him as the number three safety, um, coming out of high school. So I mean, yeah, he was a. I think he just trans he just transitioned um, his career as FSU yeah. back to linebacker. Um, well, not back to, but to linebacker. Right, FSU's kind of done that though with some guys. Um, I believe was his name Hassam Nasiril Dean was kind of like that, a bigger safety that played some linebacker. I don't know if you know who that is, but um, they've kind of had that happen before. Next guy. Former North Texas Mean Green Edge Cam Robertson receives an offer from CU. He was a 2022 three-star recruit, 901st overall, 55th overall edge. CU did offer him as a recruit. Now they're back in with Coach Prime. He is from Plano, Texas. Mm. So more connections. Yeah, they need. They definitely need to beef up their D line now. And you know, I like. I I like this look. I like this look for CU. Like they just need you know a guy who's. Kind of in the kind of in the middle, a little bit younger. They can develop him, mm -hmm. but maybe he won't get an initial snaps right the, right away. But you can see just with the offers throughout the portal, they're looking for tackles, defensive tackles, and defensive ends yep. right now with the amount of attrition that they're having. Yep. Uh, so he is on the list. He is now the second North Texas Mean Green player to earn an offer. Um, the other guy being Varkees Gums, I believe his name was. Mm -hmm. Um, next guy, former Appalachian State offensive lineman Troy Everett receives an offer from CU. Last year, he earned all a uh, second team all freshman honors from the Athletic. He played in ten games, had six starts at center last year, and allowed only one mm. snap on his two hundred and sixty-two pass blocking snaps. I believe he is a younger guy, also a twenty twenty-two recruit. Mm. If I remember correctly offensive line though another position yeah. well, especially at center too bill of was talking about van wells and there's right. no competition for him like there's no one knocking on his 
um, back door to take his like take his number, take his job, whatever. So you know, if this guy comes in, it'll be added competition and some further depth. Even though it might be a little bit younger for that center position, but I like those stats you read off. Those are some yep. good numbers. But you know, a lot of with these, you know, like G six guys, like there's some question marks on how they will adapt to you know power five play. I think the Pac twelve is the best space to do that, but <laughs> it's just seeing what what their competition looks like, what they can keep up with, their pace and how they can overall adapt to, to like the a new a new caliber of play. It's a little bit more difficult, but you know, there's a lot of guys on CU's roster that have those backgrounds, have like old Dave Harris, old Dominion, like right, right. you know, he had some great, great highlights, but you know, what how can this team work cohesively together to get those same looks for Dave? I mean ultimately that's what they're working to do, but can he personally have that same product in the Pac-12? True. Um, last year, Appalachian State trying to pull up their schedule. I pretty I remember them being a solid team. Yeah, they beat um, had like that huge upset. They beat Texas A&M. Yep, week yep. two. <laughs> yep, and they lost by two to North Carolina the week before. I guess they only went six and six, but still um, had a solid season running the ball. They averaged five point two yards per carry. Um, so, yeah, could be a nice piece for this offensive line. Next guy is, this is actually, uh, well, we'll get to the recruit, but former Marshall wide receiver EJ Horton received an offer from CU. Um, I believe another younger guy. Uh, let's see. So he joined in 2020. Looks like he redshirted then. He's classified as a junior, however, so I'd imagine two, at least two years of eligibility remaining. Mm-hmm. Um, but last year, only 12 receptions for 186 yards and one touchdown. He is six foot 175. Um, so another receiver on their radar. Yeah, I think the height might be a little bit concerning, but I mean, you know, you see it with Jimmy Horn, like, right? I think size, I guess, doesn't necessarily matter. Um, in some in some regards, at like wide receiver, I think that's like a, a caveat. And they're just planning on running away from everyone at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, EJ Horton was a 2020 three-star recruit, um, lower three-star out of Charleston, South Carolina. Um, okay, I lied. There's actually two more offers. Uh, former Old Dominion defensive lineman Chaz Wallace receives an offer from CU. Uh, last year, he had 20 total tackles, two tackles for a loss, and half a sack. They, of course, already got D.V. Harris coming in. He plays defensive line. But Chaz Wallace does play inside. I don't have his measurements in front of me, but uh, he's a pretty big boy. I think he's close to 300 pounds, um, and that's why the stats are the way they are. He plays inside. He's not a pure pass rusher. He's not going to rack up sacks, um, but he's more about kind of clogging everything up and getting run stops, really. Yeah, this one makes sense for me too. I mean, yeah, they kind of need more, more of those like interior guys, more mm-hmm. or less, and the old Dominion connection with Dave. Yep. That one also kind of you know, cards will essentially fall for that one. Six two two ninety five is what he's listed at. Um. All right. Last offer. Former main defensive end Kyrie Mans receives an offer from CU. He played in 11 games last year and charted 43 total tackles, six and a half tackles for a loss, four sacks, and one forced fumble. I like the production, Solid. yeah. yeah. Um, I'll get some more background on how long he's been in college. But uh, another guy who's not terribly big, but um, definitely has like speed. Yeah, I... Once again, the defensive ends, I guess you cannot have enough of them at this point in time. Right. Uh, yeah, they can... I think coming in with those numbers, it definitely shows um, a lot of experience, um, ability. Once again, it's a little bit of a smaller college, but could... I think with numbers like that, they could warrant um, a starting opportunity. Right. He's six three two thirty, so... Um, kind of that same frame as Demoy Kennedy, almost yeah. exactly. Um, he's listed as a junior, junior. too. Yeah. yeah. So. We'll see. And he's listed. 
What's that? Is it older guy? Yes, older guy. Also listed at defensive lineman too, which uh, you that versatility. Hopefully that's what it is, because a uh, two thirty playing on the D line probably wouldn't work out too well. And then a uh, little piece of recruiting news: twenty twenty four three star running back Cameron Jones visited CU on Monday. Uh, according to 247 Sports, 417th overall prospect, 39th running back. He says he plans to commit or announce his commitment on July 2nd. He is from Bellflower, Bellflower California and attends St. John Bosco High School. Um, has at least 11 offers, plenty of Pac-12 offers, Texas A&M's in there as well. So we'll see on him. Um, last little piece I got for you guys. A lot of players have entered the portal. Um, a lot of players have entered the portal, but this one's pretty notable. Former Washington Edge and 2025 star recruit Savelle Smalls enters the portal. Through his three seasons at Washington, only 32 total tackles, one tackle for a loss, and one fumble recovery. But a former five star recruit. Not bad. We could use him. Yeah, I think you can use him too. Okay, also, back to Cameron Jones. Rivals has him at four stars. Um, number 22 at running back in the country. Awesome. Overall, do you have an overall rank? Uh, no. It's all good. All right. Let's talk about who's actually going to visit for the spring game. I posted an article on ddmvr.com. With all the confirmed visitors I could find that will be visiting the spring game, I know a lot more rumored to show up. But we'll start at the very top. Williams Nwaniri, one of the top players, if not the top player in this class, is going to be in Boulder. I know that. <laughs> I think just you look at this list, like you just you put it on the wall and you put their stars and their names next to each other, like. Can you imagine all of these guys on a singular roster? I feel like that would be like unfair. Yeah. For <laughs> <It'd be insane. laughs> for a team like this, like Nu Nu Nuari, nu nu how do you say it? Nuaniri. Nuaniri. I, <laughs> I don't know if that's right or not. But. <laughs> like that's definitely a, certainly a headliner. Looking at this um, list of recruits, it would be incredible to get a guy like him. I think yeah. right now. You know, who knows what CU is capable of for the fall and like their production and what um, their production next season is really going to be determinant of if they get the five stars, if they get the four stars, because it'll be kind of like evidence like we can be those like blue right. blood programs. Yep. For sure. Uh, Nwaniri has gathered at least 34 offers. He earned two or received two crystal ball predictions to Oklahoma in March. And he has yet to release any uh, top 10, top 12, or anything to narrow down his list. We have another 2024 five-star visiting in Dylan Stewart. 10th overall player, second overall edge. He's earned at least 35 scholarships. He has also not released any uh, information to dwindle down his list of uh, schools to commit to. But another edge and another one of the best prospects in this class. Yeah, Rivals has the feature cast for him for 100% South Carolina. But, yeah, number one defensive end in the state in Washington, or in Maryland, I should say. Um, number two defensive end in the 2024 class and 30 overall. A stud. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they're not five stars, but they are some blue chip recruits. These guys are also visiting. Four-star athlete Aaron Butler is going to be coming back out. He visited on the weekend of March 18th on an unofficial visit. This is going to be his official visit this Saturday, this weekend. Um, and interestingly enough, he just had two crystal ball predictions filed for him to go to Oregon on April 14th. Hmm. Oh, he, does, he definitely did come off a recent visit to Oregon. I think just reading into social media as well, he's been engaging a lot with the buffs and specifically like Tim Brewster, like he had that yeah. reply. And I think he was one of those, like I was waiting to see if he was coming to Boulder this Saturday. And then he tweeted recently today that he was. So yep. 
Oregon, you know, Dan Lanning, you know, probably planting some seeds, but I think there is certainly a foundation and a good relationship with the Buffs. Yeah, I think so too. Um, he's a two-way player also. Mm. Four-star defensive lineman Brandon Davis Swain will be there. He recently released a top, recently released a top five, including Purdue, CU, USC, Auburn, and Michigan. Um, so he will be there. Boo Carter will be there. Um, top, one of the top athletes in this class, earned at least thirty-six scholarship offers and had a crystal ball prediction to Tennessee back in October. But since then, not much. He did release a top five on December 27th that included Colorado, Tennessee, Michigan, Oregon, and Ohio State. He is from Tennessee, um, and they are, of course, in that top five. Next guy, four-star running back Stacy Gage will be at the spring game. He's gathered at least 47 offers, posted a top eight on New Year's Day. That included Colorado, Alabama, Ohio State, USC, Oklahoma, Miami, Penn State, and Florida. And he's also from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and attends St. Thomas Aquinas High School, where uh, Anthony Hankerson's from. Hmm, a Florida connection. Yep. A lot of a lot of other programs listed on there too. Yep. I mean, he's highly coveted. Yeah, there's some competition there. Uh, Jason Robinson Jr. Do you know his story? Not specifics, but so I know he's quite the baller. He was committed to USC. He committed back in September of 2021. Mm -hmm. And then this year, on February 14th, he decommitted after being committed almost a year and a half. A few weeks after that, he visited Colorado and Coach Prime. He's coming back for the spring game. He's earned at least 23 offers. He has yet to also publicly announce a list of his top schools as well. Um, I just saw this in the chat. Jaden Riddell I had visiting, but Zion in the chat said Jaden Riddell will not be attending the spring game. Uh, he was a four-star tight end, 63rd overall prospect, um, fourth tight end in this class. He did just get a crystal ball yesterday for him to go to Georgia. Hmm. Four-star okay. safety Jordan Johnson Rubel will be visiting. He included CU in a top 12 that he posted back in January. He is a top 100, top 116th overall prospect, top 10 safety in this class. Uh, another four-star defensive lineman, DeAndre Robinson. He visited Colorado on January 28th. He's coming back. He's from Orlando, Florida. At least 45 offers and is yet to publicly narrow down his choices for his commitments. Uh, Kylan Fox is going to be in town. Top 200 player, earned at least 59 offers, released a top six on April 5th that included Colorado, Ole Miss, Georgia Tech, Miami, and UCF. Another exciting one that has had a lot of um, interaction with yes. specifically, specifically Tim Brewster. Uh -huh. I personally like this one for the buffs, but... You know, it also, like, this early on, too, like I said, like, it's going to be really determinate how the buffs perform in the fall mm -hmm. and their product at the end of the season in order to sway these, like, top yeah. guys to come yep. to the buffs. Um, I can't remember who it was, but we were talking about an article a few weeks ago. Maybe it was Winston Watkins that said it, who said that he thinks a lot of recruits are waiting to see what this season looks like. First off, before they actually take the plunge and commit to Colorado. Yeah, and, you know, they have those guys that do have those really good recruiting relationships with those colleges and do want to make that early on decision. But it is, it's a very important decision to make, and it would be really, you know, I think a smart way to go about committing is seeing, you know, their products in the fall and if they are worth the hype and can actually give them the products that they want to achieve in their career. Right. Uh, Tevis Metcalf, DK Metcalf's cousin, and Arkansas safety TJ Metcalf's brother. He's going to be at the spring game. Uh, he released the top four of Colorado, Georgia Tech, Arkansas, and Auburn on April 7th. Um, there's a handful of committed 2024 recruits who will be visiting. Of course, 
Uh, Juwan Johnson, current CU commit, will be there. Um, he put out a tweet a few weeks ago saying the 2024 class will be deep in this one, and from what we just talked about, really looks that way. Um, four-star Ed Sterling Dixon is going to be there. He committed to Alabama back on December 1st. He's received at least 31 scholarship offers. Of course, CU is in there, but he's going to be in town. Xavier Atkins, he committed to LSU on July 5th, 2022. He's from Humble, Texas. He'll be there. And then it sounds like Gage Ginther will not be there. He just committed to Tennessee on April 8th. And then TJ Abrams. Abrams committed to Florida State on January 26th. He's received at least 25 offers. He's from Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, obviously a big connection there with Coach Prime, but he's going to be at the spring game too. And then uh, 2025 and beyond, we know our guy Winston Watkins Jr. is going to be there. Um, Jeremiah Hoffman is receiver from Severance High School in Colorado. He's going to be there. Mason Peterson and Jeremiah Scobie both play tight end, both teammates at Dickinson High School from Dickinson, Texas. They're going to be there. And 2028 quarterback Austin <laughs> Christian is going to be there. He's 12 years Sick. old. Ambitious. Never never stop yes. chasing your dreams. As Drew Carter said, go after your <laughs> hopes and dreams. There you go. Uh, this kid did seventh grade. He's from Fort Myers, though. I need to see some highlights. Yeah. I, I haven't I need to see how they. I need to see how they do it in middle school football. <laughs> in Fort Myers, it's probably different, really different. Hopefully they're not hitting each other too hard. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so there you go. Um, guys, get your questions in now. We will answer them very, very shortly. Also, hit that <clears> thumbs up <throat> button if you've been enjoying the show. And I'm going to ask you guys again, even if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting app, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And if you've really been enjoying the show, we would appreciate your five-star review. Um, but right now it's time for a word from our presenting sponsor, Illegal Pete's. Graduation season is coming up, and let's face it, all the soon-to-be graduates deserve a celebration that's as epic as they are. And what's a party without Illegal Pete's catering? Head on over to catering.illegalpete's.com to schedule your order. Um, Illegal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. And the presenting sponsor of this show. And then shout-out to DraftKings Sportsbook. Are you a big sports betting person? I'm getting into the exclusive group that is my grandpa, my dad, and my sister. Uh -huh. Slowly but surely, I'm getting into the betting scene. My mom's like, "Don't, don't put your money into that." And my dad's like, "What are we? What are we? Are we doing money line today?" <laughs> Let's go. I oh, love why? that. Uh, what have you been betting on? Um, I did a well back in during the NFL. I did a survivor pool with my father. Mm -hmm. Uh, got kicked out because um, Rodrigo Blanketship missed field goal <laughs> the yes, first week. Um, if my sister does these like crazy parlays, like she'll send me like a text of this like twelve leg parlay, and she's like, "Do you think this is gonna hit?" And I'm like, "I mean, it all like you got LeBron James like with forty points. Like I don't know about that, but." <laughs> Well, there you go. There's Nikki's betting advice. You can get it on the action yourself. It's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know your stuff. You can get it on the action yourself over at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, where right now new customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. You can also check out their stepped-up same-game parlays during the NBA playoffs. Um, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code DMVR. New customers can make a $5 pregame Moneyline bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code DMVR. If you have a gambling, pro gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplineMA.org. Uh, in New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 Three six nine, in Kansas, call one eight hundred five two two forty seven hundred. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, uh, twenty one or, or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. 
then finally, shout out to our friends at Breckenridge Brewery. You guys know we love our Breck brews here at DMVR. You can get my favorite, the Mountain Beach Sour. Do you have a favorite Breck brew by chance? I think they have this tangerine one. Mm. I haven't been back there in a while, but I live close to it now. <clears throat> so I should probably go and see what craft beers they have. I'm not like yes, a, you should. I'm not a big IPA person. No. I can drink Guinness though, which is like, I know it's not an IPA. I know that, but it's really <laughs> dark. Like dark beers aren't really my thing, but like a nice, like sweet, like blue moon. That's my jam. I feel that. I used to drink that a lot too. Um, anyways, you can use their beer locator over at www.breckbrew.com to find a Breck brew near you. Um, Nicholas is asking if Cameron Johnson is still visiting. Last I heard, yes, he is. Question time? Whenever you're ready, Alyssa. From Miller Cunningham. You already asked this. Um, LC, Jake, if Travis plays both ways at the spring game, any chance he will wear a split gold and black jersey? That'd be cool. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think he might. That'd be like, will he like switch sidelines? Like, I don't know. I think he has like free range to do whatever he wants. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But if he's going to, he's going to be get repping mostly wide receiver. And I think for the few, maybe handful of snaps he gets at corner. I feel like they'd make him change jerseys just for the just for ESPN, you know. I just yeah. feel like it'd be confusing if you saw like two guys in white right on the opposite <laughs> sides like What do you think they're going to do with the jerseys? Do you think they just give out a bunch of jersey numbers just for the sake of our like sanity? Oh, for like the numbers? For the spring game, yeah. I <clears throat> So we know who is who actually. They're going to give out temporary numbers cuz I mean, what's today? Wednesday and I don't know how I don't know the specific number how many guys have earned their numbers yet, but I think they're going to be giving out temporary numbers, um, and then I think they're still going to have to earn them in fall camp because, you know, at this point I guess we would have seen at least like half the roster in numbers, so right. we're going to be seeing some temporary numbers uh, on guys for the spring game because ESPN would not let right. numberless guys. That's what I'm thinking, like. For ESPN I think for everyone's sake. everyone's sanity. Right. Hopefully. Um, Aubrey Smith earned his number though. Forgot to mention that he's going to be number thirty-two. Yeah, I really like him. I think he's so nice. <laughs> I remember we talked to him yeah. just last year, he's great. and he had that forced fumble. Mm -hmm. Oh, what game was it? It was gorgeous. It was like, you know, once you had those moments like that, we were like, yes, holding on to something. And yeah. he was like just one of those freshmen that. Um, stepped up when his name was called and the coaches talked about him a lot. So um, I guess not surprising that he got his number, but really glad that he is still around and on the roster. For sure. Uh, impactful for many reasons. One, he's a former player that was on this roster and is obviously going to be sticking around. And then also uh, just what Coach Hart said about him, I think last week, um, him and Marvin Ham were guys that said stood out to him from last year, both got their numbers. Mm -hmm. So, good sign to see. Uh, Aubrey Smith was a high three star in the 2022 class. Um, good thing we got that in because I was going to forget. I've seen people asking about Jimmy Horn. I don't know, guys. Um, we're supposed to talk to Coach Sean Lewis on Friday. So, maybe we can find out uh, on Friday's show. Next question from Jimmy. I heard in these streets that Shane Hooks is not coming to see you because of a number. I hope this is not true. Um, personally, I couldn't tell you if that's true or not. I don't know, but we kind of already talked about him. If we think that if uh, he was going to come, he'd be here already, right? Yeah, I think there's something there that's holding him back. I don't, I feel like that could be potentially kind of extreme. Like I, what I think is happening is just another school is getting him potentially a better offer, but yeah. at the same time, it's kind of confusing. Like, I don't know what other offer could top Colorado's in terms of like familiarity, people, right. Atmosphere, yeah. food, water, atmosphere. I mean, if he's really in deep with Ole Miss, that's a pretty great offense to play for, obviously. And I'm sure he probably, Got a better uh, NIL bag yeah. than he would have at Maybe it's the location. Like some guys For don't sure. want to come to Colorado because it's like too cold. It's too far from their families. Yeah. Like 
There's a variety of factors that go into making that decision, but a number. Yeah, I know. I don't, that would be. I don't think so. I wouldn't let a number get in the way of um, working with people that I like to work with. Or right. Um, next question from Angela. What happens if the guys that hit the portal don't get picked up by another school? Um, Land of Misfit Toys. Yeah, they sit in the portal. <laughs> that's that's kind of just what happens. Um, who Wasn't it Coach Prime that kind of talked about that? Like when he was leaving Jackson State, telling them, telling his players at Jackson State at the time not to jump in the portal because he was leaving because... Mm. That's kind of where some players go to die, basically. Like mm. a lot of players go in, but not as many always come out. So yeah, maybe I would I would assume that if you don't get an offer, at least like one offer in the portal, then you could maybe go back to your other team if the relationship hasn't been yeah. deterred or crumbled. I don't know. Um, odd enough, uh, I believe Tyus Martin did receive a JSU offer, though. Yeah, he did. It's in a Arkansas pretty strange State. twist of fate. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You know. You're seeing a lot of CU's former roster getting offered by those G6 schools. And, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what kind of offers Nico Reed gets. Yes, uh, me too. Um, PD Swag has a question for Nikki. Nikki, what are your current top positions of need for the Buffs to go chase in the portal over the rest of the offseason? And thanks for joining the show and Sco Buffs. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, Jake. <laughs> I wouldn't course. be here without this guy right here. Oh, come on. Come um, on. definitely D line, of course. Just like I just in the matter of days, all they all yep. left. Having five guys on the, the D line, that is just it's just not enough. So I think they're um, finding that. I asked I try I asked Coach Prime if they're looking to fulfill any specific positions and they're just looking for um, I guess everything across the board. Tight end, they could definitely use, I think, a yes, Sadu is like a really good pass catcher, and I think you can adjust your offense to utilize his strengths, but I think they need a pretty solid blocker, someone mm -hmm. a little bit, I think, bigger. Even if he's like a, if he's like a sophomore, I think you just need like a one-year experience tight end, someone to kind of, grow with. I think Caleb Fourier, I'm really interested to see what he can yep. produce and with the buffs this year, healthy. Um, I don't know, the quarterback situation, I know Shooter was gonna start, but you know, in the emergency that they do need a backup, I don't know who I would point to amongst <laughs> these four guys yep. to yep. go in and like pull a Owen McCowan, you right. know. That was really like a Cinderella story of sorts, but I just He'd probably be quarterback two on this team now. I I know he lo he he would out of like all of them. I mean, yeah. he beat all he beat quarterback one and two, yeah. and three. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Last season, I think I don't know, and that's the hard thing too. Like, do you think they can go into the portal and like pick up like a guy who's just like looking to live out his last year of college, who's like be willing to take the bench and maybe not get any playing time? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is it would, one, either probably be an older guy who you kind of already know what he is and they would have to kind of swallow the pill and just become a backup. Or are you going to have to bring in a younger guy who uh, is probably already not thrilled about his playing time already? And obviously quarterbacks aren't going to get much playing time outside of Shador this year, hopefully, I, I should think, say. I think they can use another corner. I'm interested to see Nigel Bethel's next move. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's like the grandpa of the Sea Buffs. <laughs> he's been there forever. Yeah, there's a but, few of them. You know, it's if if he if if or if he leaves, then they certainly need another cornerback. Um, I think that Cormani Travis Hunter pairing is going to be really productive. But um, you know, getting some other guys in, some new faces on like the the games they were kind of winning by a good margin. You know, depth. Right. Always important, but number one D line right now. Um, what concerns me is like Bill O'Boyle's stress about the O line strength and how they're not like how no one on the O line is like meeting his expectations and none of them have their numbers yet. Like, I think from what I've seen from practice, like saving on Washington, like he's a wall, like he's huge. Just, you know, what else? 
I think we just have to see kind of more in practice. And also the spring game is going to be pretty telling of yep. maybe some of those kind of negative aspects that right. Bill Boyle is seeing within the offensive line. But, you know, like that's another room that's just filled with like G6 guys like right. who are trying to step up and take that opportunity. It is the largest room, but I just have like – they're going to have to make do with what they have at the moment. Um, unless I know they have like Jack Bailey coming in and stuff, yep. but yep. I feel like O'Boyle and just like the line is very particular about their products and the expectations that he has for them. Right. We will definitely learn a lot about this offensive line on Saturday. Ajo asks on Monday, I asked how you felt about players entering the portal before the spring game. What do you think about coach prime's answer? Um, it was interesting. It was very prime, a very prime answer. Um, but that's what he came here to do. I mean, he came here to make over the roster. And even today, I've had some like mentions uh, on Twitter today, kind of like asking, of course, like the depth on the D line maybe is a bit concerning because you have five scholarship guys going into a spring game. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is what a lot of the fan base asked for was a complete roster overhaul. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's ugly, and it doesn't always look great at times. It's sometimes you're left with five scholarship defensive linemen yeah. before your spring game, but it's a, the process. Yeah, it's just the nature of football. Like, you know, when there is a cutting of ties, it's never going to be, I mean, all pleasant, like, handshakes, like, right. thank you. It's, you know, we we don't get the full behind the scenes, but I don't know... There's like, I think with Nico Reed, like that one really came as like a surprise. That wasn't one that like maybe Coach Prime was trying to not like instigate. I don't know if I, I wouldn't, I'm not saying that Coach Prime instigated any of these, but like you said, we were going to experience roster turnover. Guys had to leave, but it's just, you know, I think it is a very Coach Prime answer. Like, He's not going to be upset. He's going to adapt and pivot, like, yep. and find another guy. He can, he can pluck whatever talent he possibly wants. I mean, you know, of course, of course, that comes to a certain extent. But as we've just seen with this whole recruiting trail the past few months, like, if he wants a guy, they'll go after him and get him. For sure, he ain't hard to find. That's what they say. Tony wants to know, Nikki, what are you looking forward to the most at the spring game? Um. <laughs> I'm like so basic saying this, but I love Ralphie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to see Ralphie and just like how much he's grown. Yeah. Um, I am really excited to see like full length of the field, like bomb to Travis Hunter. Yep. Offense. I'm I am excited to see just more of that offensive line and that coverage. I think the specific like the name guys like Shane Cox like that production Jordan Dominic yeah. like he's just one of those guys that like really excites me just from mm -hmm. the crazy numbers that he put in put up at Arkansas and the years he's had at Georgia Tech um, yeah. really excited to see what kind of pass rushing vibe styles he brings to the table and um, yeah I'm who else there's a few other guys I'm just excited about the scenes same the vibes i mean it's gonna be i don't even know what to expect and i'm excited for whatever i'm about to experience i'm interested to see if Dion smith is healthy yes. i know he's been dealing with like a hamstring thing we haven't been able to i think we've really brought it up in media he's but back on the field they posted pictures of him practicing on monday so yay good for him yes cool yeah excited to see him back so he's doing okay charlie offered all the walk on king yep. he had a huge spring game last year so yeah, just just see overall, I think in some to see a football game and actually put some like more like tangible evidence, things that we can work with to say like, hey, like this team is actually maybe or maybe not <laughs> yeah. living up to the hype. <laughs> For sure. Um, it's going to be very exciting. Maurice is asking what happened to Zico. A lot of people have been asking this and uh, um, it's an interesting answer. One, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know why he hasn't been like featured on as much stuff recently but uh two it's also really really hard to tell who's who without numbers so uh while i do think nothing has happened to zico it's also hard for almost everyone to tell exactly how he's been doing too so uh we'll find out for sure on saturday yeah pd swag with another question 
What is the top Colorado thing you'd recommend people check out during their time visiting for the spring game this weekend? <laughs> I almost, uh, yeah, I, I used to work at Tiaco. Mm -hmm. Got to plug my Tiaco people. They have great marks there. And um, when I worked there one day over the summer, Aaron Rodgers came in. Mm. I'm not even joking. I was a hostess and I was like, oh my God, you're Aaron Rodgers. Tiaco's a really good spot. Um, nice outside. I think a good rooftop. Are you familiar with the Boulder scene? Because I went there four years. Like no, you you have me trumped there. Um, if you're looking for something on the hill, that's fun. Um, half ass. They also have really strong. <laughs> you can tell what, what what happened to me in college. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pitchers. You can don't drink too many of those. <laughs> um, uh, where else? Rosetta has a really good rooftop. Avanti has a. The, I think the best bar view in Boulder. I've heard about Avanti. Avanti, they have good espresso martinis, and it's kind of like a free for all. You can just like go up upstairs. You don't need like a reservation or anything. Um, where? Well, else? yeah, I would just say. Well, it's also gonna be the weather. It's okay. I saw some people asking about this too. Latest reports are that we will be getting... Oh, Jesus, H. Um, <laughs> 41 degrees the high and currently a 30% chance of snow. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I we'll see. I saw Brian's tweet. Like, that's the one thing that's like not going Coach Prime's way is yep. the, weather. the weather. Even like yesterday, it said it was going to be 55, but... I know. See, I'm seeing 46... It's all over the place. Yeah. You know, when the day comes, but... We'll find out. It shouldn't be too bad. Oh, I'm trying to think of, like, some other good restaurants. I've got one more. Check yeah. out the DMBR bar on York and Colfax. <laughs> yes. Of course. Honestly, it's a, it's a beautiful scene here. It is. Um, not many people showed up for the Rockies today, but that's all right. When you guys are here, um, if you're in Denver, you have nothing to do, and the Avs or Nuggets are playing... I would recommend coming to hang out here. Uh, it's quite the experience. We have our final super chat from Lawrence. What's up, man? Did Nico quit? Not throwing dirt on Darrell, but why did the team go 1-11? Have you asked Darrell's thoughts? Also, Prime did this at JSU year one. Um, I mean... Uh, I don't want to say he quit, but uh, he obviously entered the portal before the spring game, so... yeah. Um, yeah, there's no necessarily like specifics. I think it's like probably certainly personal reasons. Maybe, I don't know. These are all just assumptions like frustration that he didn't get a number. Like, you know, he was so coveted on the Buffs defense. Even the last two years, he was just super productive. And I just think maybe he just wasn't the right fit, you yep. know? Yep. Um, but on, uh, no, I haven't talked to Carl Durrell uh, <laughs> since he's been fired. Have you talked to Carl Durrell since he's been fired? No, I've not talked to Carl Durrell. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't tell you. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it just, it maybe it just wasn't a good fit. Ask me uh, if you come and hang out for the spring game, and I can tell you a little bit more. I'll leave it at that. Anything else? That's it. There you go. Nikki. Two shows Nikki. in now. Oh, my God. My stats are up. Yeah. You doubled your stats today. I know. This is... Hopefully, this won't be... I don't think it will be the last of time. Of course not. No, I you'll know. be back. Oh, thank you guys for having me. Always a pleasure. And yeah, go follow me on Twitter for the same same stuff that Jake probably tweets. But, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm always good to reiterate nah, and you do, break some news. You do... She does her thing over there at CU Sports Report. She's writing a ton of articles. You write more than I do, for what it's worth. So. Yeah, we all we all have her thing. We, we do. All, we all have um, her thing. So check out all of Nikki's work there at Nikki Edwards with three S's. Check out CU Sports Report. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. We will formally announce... All of our spring game plans tomorrow. Um, let us know if you guys are coming in, too. I've already had a few people hit up my DMs and say they're here, coming to hang out. Um, if you have any questions or just want to say hi and see when you can come meet up with us, shoot a DM. I'll let you know. Sco Buffs, Nikki? Yeah, I guess Sco Buffs. See you guys on Saturday. Yep, see you Saturday. <laughs>